of Easter for this service of Holy Eucharist and the renewal of wedding vows. And we are so fortunate to have three couples with us today that are celebrating their anniversaries. And I will invite any of you, when we get to that part of the service, to join in and at the appropriate time say those I wills and I do's. Um, it is truly a joy, and I want to thank all of our acolytes that you are here with us today and our musicians. It is wonderful to have a procession again. Wasn't that great to have a procession? Yes. So any of you interested in being acolytes or to sing, our, our time is coming for us to get back and do those things again. The service will continue on page 355 of the prayer book. Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known and from you, no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. <laughs> Arrived at the house where we were. 
Spirit told me to go with them and not to make a distinction between them and us. These six brothers also accompanied me, and we entered the man's house. He told us how he had seen the angel standing in his house and saying, Send to Joppa and bring Simon, who is called Peter. He will give you a message by which you and your entire household will be saved. And as I began to speak, the Holy Spirit fell upon them, just as it had upon us at the beginning. And I remembered the words of the Lord, how he had said, John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. If then God gave them the same gift that he gave us when we, were, when we believed in the Lord Jesus Christ, who was I that I could hinder God? When they heard this, they were silenced, and they praised God, saying, that God has given to the Gentiles the repentance that leads to life. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. <laughs> Let us read Psalm 148 in unison. Hallelujah. Praise, Praise the Lord.
Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. At the Last Supper, when Judas had gone out, Jesus said, Now the Son of Man has been glorified, and God has been glorified in him. If God has been glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself and will glorify him at once. Little children, I am with you only a little longer. You will look for me, and as I said to the Jews, so now I say to you, where I am going, you cannot come. I give you a new commandment, that you love one another, just as I have loved you. You also should love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. Jesus said to the disciples, Where I am going, you cannot come. I have given you a new commandment, that you love one another, just as I have loved you. You also should love everyone love one another by this everyone will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another this morning we hear in these lessons what we are called to do as christians it's very straightforward and i would encourage all of you to take this bulletin home read mark learn and inwardly digest the, the scriptures we have gotten before us today are pointing us toward the way of life. They are pointing us in the direction with Jesus. And we hear the, in the Acts of the Apostles the work of Peter, as Peter is saying to the other disciples, what I heard was God said, God does not differentiate, that God did not make good and bad. There's not, there aren't things that are profane. And basically what he is saying, if this is, if this is for the Jews, it is also for the Gentiles. That God offers everyone repentance. That God speaks to everyone, God loves everyone. And that you are very much loved. And we hear in the psalm, the psalm that's been sung for centuries, hallelujah, Praise the Lord from the heavens. And what we hear in that is that God has created all, everything. And when we read that, we, we have to be aware that if God created everything and there's nothing that's profane, there's nothing that is not worthy of God's having been created, then we are to take care of it. It's very straightforward. The scriptures are very straightforward. And in the revelation of John, that we are called to remember every day is a new day. And for those of you who are renewing your vows today, you probably better than anyone know that your life before your marriage was very different than it is today. Would you agree with that? Mm -hmm. yes. And I think everybody in the congregation would, re would agree with that, that the person you were before you got married is not the person you are today. And I imagine that all of you who have children would say, your life is not anything like you expected. Is that correct? Yes. <laughs> and I would imagine that our kids would say that, you know, life isn't what they expected. That there have been things that have happened, there have been great things, and there have been not so great things. And those of you who are grandparents, did you ever think you could love? as much as you love your grandchildren. Did you ever think, I mean, the passion, the commitment you feel for your grandchildren, and for all the grandchildren in the congregation know you are loved. 
You are loved. But what about this gospel lesson that Jesus says, where I'm going, you cannot come. Well, the way I read that is, it's not our time yet. Our time is for us to still be here, that we still have work to do. We still have work. And yet, whatever we're experiencing, whether it be good or bad, this is where we're called to be. This is where we're called to be for whatever reason. And for those of you who sometimes wonder, why is life happening in a certain way? Well, I don't know the answer of that, but I know that God is at work. And I heard a very interesting interview this week with a physician, a retired psychiatrist, Dr. Sarah Flick has written a book, and I believe the title is Desire, Mystery, and uh, Belonging. And in the book, she talks about how we all desire to be closer to God, that that is the desire of our heart. And St. Bonaventure in the 12th century said, if you want to know God, know your innermost desire because we are created in the image of God. And the desires that God places on our heart, the desire to be at one with God, is going to be the best way for us to get a grasp on what God is like. It's that when we can be walking in the way, that we can be walking in the way of Jesus and experiencing that love of Christ that God has for us, that we know what God is like because we are beloved children of God. Each and every one of you are beloved children of God. That God loves you as though you were the only person in the world. Being one of six, that was always a hard one for me to understand. <laughs> but I think it really is true that God loves each of us so much that often we have trouble remembering that. And often in our world, we have trouble seeking the desires of our own heart. But in fact, if we are pursuing, and I'm not talking about material things, I'm talking about the relationships we have the relationship we have with God, the relationship we have with our beloved, the relationships that we have with our children, with our best friends, with those we come in communion with. Dr. Flick talks about the first sort of, as she has looked at her life, and she is a spiritual director, as, as well as the wife of an Episcopal priest and a retired psychiatrist, she talks about how this desire is something that we'll, we will have a desire and we'll be pursuing it and then something happens. Maybe there's a job change or maybe there's a school change or maybe there's a health change and suddenly our world is in chaos and she describes that as suddenly it's a mystery. It's truly a mystery of what God is at work in the world doing in our life. It's a mystery because we had this laid out plan. Have you ever had a laid out plan? And you thought, okay, this, I'm gonna do this, 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 and this. And then suddenly something happened. Maybe it was the pandemic that came along. Maybe the school year you anticipated didn't happen. Maybe the relationships, the visits, the trips, of course. We've all experienced that. We've all experienced that worldwide. And I believe that God is in that mystery and that God is still at work creating a new day. And I believe that with all my heart. And we have it in scripture. We have it in scripture that every day is a new day. And what we were before the pandemic and what we were last week and what we are this morning is not going to be who we were, are tonight, tomorrow, no. and next week because God is still at work, and we are people of faith. And so in that state of mystery, there is hope. There is hope of what God is doing at our life, in our life. And so we can always count on that. And in a marriage, there will be times, as all of you know, 
and some of you sitting here who are ce celebrating 40 years know perhaps better than anyone is that life is a series of ups and downs, but that constant is our faith. Our, the constant is our faith that holds us steady, steady that promises that tomorrow, and maybe even this afternoon, is going to be better than it was this morning. And the third area that Dr. Flick talks about is belonging. And things are different because we all belong. We belong to Christ. We are children of God. And we belong to one another. We belong to our families. We belong to this congregation. We belong to this larger community. We belong to school groups. We belong to civic groups. We belong to sporting events. But we do not live in isolation. And so what does that mean to us who are now living in a time where the world, it's as though somebody threw something up in the air and we have no idea the way it's going to land. What does that mean for us? Well, I think what it means is as people of hope that we know it can be better. But like Peter, we have to be open to God's word. We have to be open to recognize there are people in, in this community, and I don't mean just this community, but in the community of humanity that are different than us, that do not look like us, that have different values, who have different color skin, who have different lifestyles. We are all one people, and we are all God's children. We are all God's children. And so it becomes a challenge. And you know, I think in our families and in our church life, if we're doing our work, that's where we learn how to welcome difference. That's where we learn to recognize we're not all the same. I don't think anybody can be in a, any kind of a relationship for more than a few days and realize we don't always think the same. Does, has anybody ever found that you've been in a relationship that you think exactly what the other person thinks and you always agree? I, no, no, we always. <laughs> because when we get to know each other, when we open ourselves up in love to accept one another, we hear that we don't all agree and it's okay. It's okay. And so, like Peter, our work is cut out for us. It's not our time yet to go on to heaven, but it is our time to share the good news of Jesus Christ, to carry that love into the world, to carry that love that you have found in your marriages, in your friendships, in all of your relationships, to take it into the world, because there are people who desperately need to hear this good news. And as I think about kids now who have gotten into gangs or people who have become addicted to drugs and alcohol, and I can't help but wonder, are they just searching to find a place where they belong? Are they simply searching to find a place where they belong? And maybe, maybe our role as the Peters, as the disciples in the world is simply to listen, to listen to God calling us to reach out to somebody else and say, I want you in this community. I invite you to be a part of our family. Because God loves you, and God loves each one of God's children, and nothing will ever separate us from the love of that God, and no one will Nothing will ever separate anyone from that love of God. But some people do need to hear it a little bit more. And some people do need to have you reach out a hand and show your love and your interest. And sometimes it's as simple as asking the question, how are you today? How are you today? Because when we ask somebody how they are today and, and stop to listen, what we say is, I'm interested in you. I see you. And 
that's what it means to love somebody, is to say, I see you and I love you the way you are. And today, I hope that you will look at somebody and say to them, I see you and I love you as Christ loves me. I love you. Amen. If you would turn in your service leaflet, please, to the anniversary of a marriage. And I will, um, I, everyone can stay seated except those who are renewing their vows. And so, Vicki and Jeffrey, Joe Leslie and Dickie, and Gail and Joe. Friends in Christ, we are gathered together with these couples who have come today to give thanks to God for God's blessing upon their marriage and to reaffirm their marriage covenant. Jeffrey, do you here in the presence of God and of this congregation renew the promises you made when you bound yourself to Vicki in holy matrimony? I do. Vicki, do you here in the presence of God and of this congregation renew the promise you made when you bound yourself to Jeffrey in holy matrimony? I do. Joe, do you here in the presence of God and this congregation renew the promises you made when you bound yourself to Gail in holy matrimony? I do. Gail, do you here in the presence of God and of this congregation renew the promises you made when you bound yourself to Joe in holy matrimony? I do. Dickie, do you here in the presence of God and of this congregation renew the promises you made when you bound yourself to Joe Leslie in holy matrimony? I do. Joe Leslie, do you here in the presence of God and of this congregation renew the promises you made when you bound yourself to Dickie in holy matrimony. If our couples would say to, together, we thank, thank you, the most gracious God, for consecrating our marriage to Christ's name and the rest of us. We have served in companionship with each other and with you. Give us grace to live together in love and fidelity with care for one another. Strengthen us all our days. Bring us to that holy saint where, with those who love that, we will feast forever in our heavenly home and home. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. May God the Father, who at creation ordained these men and women to become one flesh, keep you one. Amen. Amen. May God, the Son, who adorned this manner of life by his first miracle at the wedding in Cana of Galilee, be present with you always. Amen. May God, the Holy Spirit, who has given you the will to persevere in your love and in your covenant with each other, strengthen your bond. Amen. And may God, the Holy Trinity, the source of all strength, of, excuse me, may God, the Holy Trinity, the source of all unity, bless you this day and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Congratulations. May be seated, and let me just say this is a this is a liturgy in the Episcopal Church uh, that is that is a set service that is offered. And how it came about that we did it today was one year ago today. Vicky and Jeffrey were married, and due to COVID, they were not able to be married in the church. And so we said, and so they couldn't have all of you with them. And one of the things they said was, we really would like to do this with our friends. And we said, okay, one year from now, we'll do it. So welcome to the wedding. <laughs> <laughs> and so I, when I reached out to Gail and Joe, and you'll remember Gail fell, was it seven weeks? Was it longer than that? It was the Wednesday before Monday, Thursday, that Gail was here setting up the altar with the altar guild that she fell. And this is the first time she's been back to church. And when I talked with Joe about it, he said, this is, gonna, this is your 40th wedding anniversary, and they would not miss it that she would be here. And so we are, I, we are so glad. We're so glad. And Joe 
Michelle Leslie and Dickie Witten who were married six years ago. Yes, and it is a joy to be able to be here with you all to celebrate again. Congratulations. <laughs> so, this is a, the Episcopal Church is a liturgical church, and this is what we do. We celebrate the different milestones in the lives of our people. And what a joy this is. And um, I want to welcome Vicki's parents uh, who are here with us today and her maid of honor. And so I hope that at the coffee hour you will join all of these people and that we can celebrate these weddings. So. The prayers of the people are in the service leaflet. Are there birthdays or anniversaries? 
Is there an anniversary here? Birthday? All right. Yay. All right. Good, good, good. Okay. Come on down. Okay, so who are the birthdays? Birthdays, birthday, birthdays. Okay, let us pray. Oh God, our times are in your hand. Look with favor, we pray on your servants as they begin another year. Grant that they may grow in wisdom and grace and strengthen their trust in your goodness all the days of their life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Anniversary. All right. today for their fourth anniversary. I love that. Very good. Okay, let's look at the anniversary prayer. You know, this is a wonderful thing that we can come together in community because we belong to a community that is a praying community. Let us pray. Oh God, you have so consecrated the covenant of marriage that in it is represented the spiritual unity between Christ and his church. Send therefore your blessing upon these your servants that they may so love, honor, and cherish each other in faithfulness and patience, in wisdom and true godliness, that their home may be a haven of blessing and peace through Jesus Christ our Lord and the blessing of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Bless, preserve, and keep you. The Lord mercifully with his favor look upon you and fill you with all spiritual benediction and grace that you may faithfully live together in this life and in the age to come have life everlasting. Amen. Amen. Happy anniversary. Yay. It's right. Excuse me. Okay. Well, um, thank you all for being here this morning. And I want to um, just give you a little update. Next Sunday, our bishop will be here with us for confirmation. She will be at the 8 o'clock service. And then about 9.15, she will be in the parish hall uh, to meet with all the confirmants and those who are being received or reaffirmed. And we will be taking pictures with the bishop. And so I encourage you all who want your picture taken with the bishop to be sure to be here early. And those of you who would like to meet the bishop, Bishop Susan is one of the most personable bishops I've ever known. And she truly loves coming out to Convocation 8, which is the convocation we're in, and Convocation 9, and comes out here more than any bishop that we, I think we've ever had because she's truly concerned about the people out here. And so I hope that you will come and meet her and, um, and celebrate this glorious day. We have five young people who are being confirmed next week. And we have four not so young people who are being confirmed or received or reaffirmed. Um, and if anybody at the last minute feels like you would like to do that, let me know. And, We'll get you in here too. And um, also next week is our beloved campus minister, Tom Dixon's last Sunday with us, his last day. Tom, would you stand up and so we can recognize you? And teaching the confirmation class, which has been very good, and um, I'm so grateful for that, and so grateful for all of your work, Tom, with our students, and I hope that all of you will today can stay today at Coffee Hour and speak to Tom, and he will be here next week as well, but I uh, just wanted to make sure that you know today, just in case he's flooded with students and pictures next week, because you're going to be, you and Margaret are going to be in a lot of pictures, and so... <laughs> And that's a good thing. And I want to welcome two of our returning students who are here with us today. Hey, guys. Good to see you. And I want to stand up. And so these are two of our Hampton Sydney graduates that are back. Let's give them a hand. Good to see you. And I hope that you'll stay for coffee hour, too. 
So very good, very good. Um, I want to mention that um, June 4th, Michael and I will start our vacation and we'll be gone June 4th to the 11th. And um, on June 5th, Mother Carolyn will be with us, will be with you. I will be at Sandbridge uh, preaching and caring for that congregation that week. Uh, Mother Carolyn will be here. There will be an 8 o'clock service and a 1030 service. But starting the following week, there will only be one service during the summer, and it will be at 1030. And Ruth Partlow, the Reverend Ruth Partlow, will be here on June 12th. And my thanks to the Luns who will be hosting her. Um, and this will, many of you who know Ruth will welcome her into your arms. And those of you who have not met her yet will find her just absolutely delightful. In the vestry this week, we discussed my sabbatical. And I was, I will confess, I was waffling because with all of the weddings and funerals and Holy Week and Easter, I hadn't done a whole lot of sabbatical planning, but the vestry seemed to feel it's probably, this is the best time for me to do my sabbatical during the summer. So um, when I leave on June 4th, I, at this point, we're looking at I wouldn't be back till after Labor Day. And so during that time, Mother Carolyn and Ruth Partlow will be uh, here in the congregation. And I want to say something about the one service because I know for some people that really like the 8 o'clock service, I hope you'll think of it this way as an opportunity for all of us to come together and all of you to meet. And, you know, when, um, oh my gosh, did I tell you about the caterpillar? No, I forgot the highlight of my sermon, which makes sense now. Okay, so, <laughs> okay, you know when you're in that state of mystery? Well, Martha Beck, who is a social worker, talks about, and Dr. Sarah Flick talks about in her book, is how that mystery is like a, a caterpillar. And that I didn't know this, but evidently when a caterpillar is in that process, in that transformative process, and my biology people can correct me or add more to this, that there's like an, uh, she referred to it as an imaginary disc that becomes liquid inside the caterpillar. And that, and so it doesn't look anything like the caterpillar, but then when it's time that the caterpillar begins to open up and the wings come out and we see this beautiful butterfly. And that in a time of transformation, we can think of our own lives as being in that cocoon. And that we don't know what that butterfly that's gonna come out is gonna look like. But there is a promise that in our spiritual DNA that God is at work in all of us all the time. And so that we will experience multiple spiritual changes and life changes. And it's our faith that gives us that hope that like the caterpillar, that we can go through a difficult time. The world can go through a difficult time. But we have yet to see what's going to evolve but we can expect, that we can count on, that whatever it is, that God will make it beautiful and God will make it new. And so this summer, while I am on sabbatical, not only is it a time for me for renewal, but it's a time for the congregation. And so Chris and I have spoken about, you know, we're, I know that you all have missed having a choir and that at some point in the summer to offer a time before a 10.30 service where people could come in like at 9.30 and Chris would work with you. This would be our sort of come as you are choir and stand and maybe we can do that a, a couple times or more and see to begin to build that interest that we can have a choir in the fall. And I know that there are some family and youth events that the vestry have been talk has been talking about in terms of some outings um, that will be an opportunity to bring um, the whole parish. Perhaps it'll be a picnic, perhaps it'll be a float trip, they have, perhaps it'll be a bowling trip. But the idea is to bring people back together that we might worship together. Um, 
Robin Sedgwick has been in touch with Patsy Watson, and we will be engaged in some outreach projects and continuing on with FACES and some other things. And so um, it's going to be an exciting time for you all as well as uh, for us. And at this point, Michael and I are looking at going to Costa Rica and uh, for at least some period of time. And, um, and as that unfolds, I will let you know how that goes. And if anybody has any questions or concerns about this, if you would please get in touch with me because everything is still evolving and, um, and we want to make this a really positive opportunity for the whole parish. And I am so grateful for this opportunity to even consider a sabbatical. So thank you very much for your generosity. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us in offering and sacrifice to God.
Prayer D, found on page 372 of the prayer book. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. And lift up the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right to glorify you, Father, and to give you thanks, for you alone are God, living and true, dwelling in light inaccessible from before time and forever, fountain of life and source of all goodness. You made all things and filled them with your blessing. You created them to rejoice in the splendor of your radiance. Countless throngs of angels stand before you to serve you night and day. And beholding the glory of your presence, they offer you unceasing praise, joining with them and giving voice to every create creature under heaven. We acclaim you and glorify your name as we sing. Son, Jesus Christ. 
Grant that all who share this bread and cup may become one body and one spirit, a living sacrifice in Christ to the praise of your name. Remember, Lord, your one holy Catholic and apostolic church, redeemed by the blood of your Christ. Reveal its unity, guard its faith, and, and preserve it in peace. And grant that we may find our inheritance with all the saints who have found favor with you in ages past. We praise you in union with them and give you glory through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, all honor and glory are yours, Almighty God and Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, forever and ever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.
Turning to page 365, let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. And now may the peace of God that passes all understanding keep your hearts and minds and the knowledge and love of God and of the Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessing of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen.